I got laid off. I got fired. I got fired. But here's the thing. I was a binge guy. I remember seeing her at the local titty bar. I feel dirty right now just telling it into a microphone. We're broken around here. Working man sucks. Everybody, welcome back to the Working Class Holes Podcast. I'm your host, Ed McGowan, here in a break room with my co-host, Josh Accardo. What's Edward. up, buddy? What's up, man? How you doing? Doing pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. Well, oh. <laughs> Before got? we get into the show, I got to tell, tell you about this. So, I have been really trying my best to not lose it or <laughs> in front of my kid. Uh-huh. I'm doing great. Uh-huh. Don't you know? I don't. I know someone when he's acting up. I've been really good. Uh, <laughs> so this weekend, I always take him to the park, and lately, we've been having an influx, if you will, of mentally oh. unstable slash homeless slash drug addicts because of the in dollar the, store in the kids park. No, no, no! In front of my building, we had oh. one guy. We had one guy that that set up shop he had a huge cart with stuff mm -hmm. and he had a chair mm -hmm. and there's like he's he was definitely not all there but all there to know like the rules yeah i guess if you have a cart and it's all on the cart they the cops can't really do anything they can't move you so he sat there huh day and night in a chair with his Ooh, cart on the, on the sidewalk on the sidewalk huh in front of the in front of the building then he started setting up tarps that he bought oh, fuck. on all the planters, bro, and then put Clorox, dude, once those bleach, tarps show up, dude, and all this stuff. And bleach, I, what's he doing with the bleach? He was te he told the superintendent that it was due to he wanted to sanitize because the dogs urinate all over the. So mm. now dogs are trying to lick the powder. So I was gonna go down there because they, they powdered bleach. Yeah, he, yo, that's dangerous. Yeah, so. I was gonna go down there and fix the issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Turns out they the bill. I went through all the before I was gonna do that. I talked to the building. I said, "Listen, I got a dog. I got a kid." Uh, so finally, I enough complaints had happened where because he was doing that shit, the cops moved him. Mm -hmm. Another guy a couple weeks ago, same thing, had to move him. Coming back home from the park, there's this dude. I saw him when I was leaving to go take my son. He was a white dude, definitely losing it. Tons of stuff on him. He almost dressed like he was Dick Van Dyke and Mary Poppins, like with all the band shit. But it wasn't band shit. It was just like bags and different, like, uh, you know how John Popper from Blues Traveler has that thing for all his harmonicas, but it's just <laughs> filled with trash. <laughs> and he's making like guns. Like he's doing, he has like a fifth, an empty bottle of a fifth. He's throwing it. It's cr like the glass is breaking. This is right in front of my door. Whoa, 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 what do you mean with the gun? So, hold on. Well, he's like, he has this thing, like a prop. It's not not a gun, but it's built, like, he made it out of sticks with rubber bands. Oh, man. And he's pointing it at people. Oh, so, God damn I'm it. so irritated. I'm like, I mean, let me get Fuck. my, let me just do this thing. And as I'm coming back, one of the women, two of the women are talking, you know, out towards where the building is, my, where I live. And they stop me. They know me from the building. And they go, um... One of them says, hey, just a heads up, because you have your son. This guy is now, like, pointing this and jabbing at people walking into the building. And the other woman is going towards the building, and she asked me if I would, if I, if she could walk in with me. She's scared. Yeah. Oh, wow. So I just, dude, I have, something snaps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I have Levon, and I put my son to the side, and I, I, I tear into this dude's, in his face, like a f just screaming in this guy's face and i tell him i go listen if you are here in five minutes i'm coming back down in five minutes if you are here in five minutes you do not be here in five minutes trust me and the woman the woman's face <laughs> in the building, i thought she's gonna shit her pants she and was, now she has to ride the elevator with me she was scared of him now she's like jesus christ this fucking psychopath and i'm trying to like this guy lives him. indoors <laughs> this guy's crazier than the guy out on the street and i had to like reevaluate like i turned the volume down on myself internally yeah, when yeah, i yeah. i got in the elevator and my voice i just because you're I'm still hot i'm so so yeah and yeah, i'm yeah, like yeah. so you know um i I just, uh, with all the mental illness out, <laughs> now I'm like a councilman. <laughs> so 
so with the uh, the epidemic of mental illness in this neighborhood, it's just getting to be just overwhelming for me and the family. And the fear you had coming into the building, I just saw that. And I uh, just like out of breath. <laughs> this whole thing out I'm of breath. Sweating like. <laughs> <laughs> There's a vein pulsing in your head as you're like, the mental illness. <laughs> they need to be more cared for. <laughs> it's just a shame these guys can't get the help they truly need. <laughs> and the, as you're pulling a baseball bat out of your. <laughs> the best part, and here's the best part, is my son is watching this and he's not phased. Mm -hmm. at, in fact, looks at me while this woman. Is in the elevator, like, like the way her face looked, and he goes, "Dad, Dad, what'd you say to that guy? <laughs> what was that? What'd you say to that guy?" And I was like, "Gonna, I'm definitely gonna tell my wife, but I'm gonna get in trouble." And I, because you know, I'm not supposed to be doing that for him. Uh huh. And I was like, "Man, how am I gonna tell her? How am I gonna?" And right when we walk in, he's he can't. He makes he's young. Like he's only he'll be three, but he could talk a lot. And he just goes, Dad, Dad yelled at the guy. <laughs> He's like, what? Uh, like, I got in an argument with a fucking mental person. Dude, it's crazy doing that shit in front of your wife. Like, I, because I do that in the car. So we just had an incident in the car the other day. And, uh, you know. But, how but my point is this, before you finish your yeah, story. Yeah, you and the reason why I thought it was appropriate for the show. Oh, okay. Because we, it's not cheap to live where I live. And for the most part, we are middle class maybe approaching upper middle class maybe right there at that very beginnings of that mm -hmm. but the fact that like that is in my neighborhood in front of my building constantly oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that n the cops will not intervene whatsoever i mean that's part of living in a city though dude i i get that true i mean I, like, I i've been here almost 20 years and i've lived in neighborhoods where i didn't make as much money as i do now and that would Never happen. I see it. It goes in phases up where I'm at in Washington Heights. Like there's, I mean, they come around, you know, it, it'll usually be like one guy and then one. And then when another guy finds out that he's, yes, he's, he's got doing a spot. Something. Yeah. There's a second guy will yeah. show up. Yeah. And then so there'll be like a couple guys. Sometimes there, there'll be as many as like four or five guys, like in the, like, you know, a couple block radius of like where, you know, my, what I see. And Astoria's not known for know this. That's another thing, too, is Astoria, like the parts of Astoria we're yeah. talking about, uh -huh. we're not Manhattan. There isn't a whole lot of resources if you're homeless. Right. That, I mean, there's, I guess because the train's really close, that's about it. You get to beg. But that's about it. There is no, like, you know, if you hang around in Bryant Park as a homeless, you could get some shit. You could get, or if you hang out yeah, uh, Washington Heights, gonna, cops are gonna move you there. Oh, that's Brian but Park. Yeah, but still, cops are gonna fuck. I'm saying, move comparatively you speaking, that's, that's why we don't have as many homeless people hanging here. I'm not saying they don't come here to sleep, but ultimately, there's not a lot. I think you just you've dodged it. Uh, I, I, I saw in my head. I'm like, I don't see how much different this neighborhood is from Washington Heights. Yeah, uh, I think you've just dodged it. I think it's just, and then once, and the other thing is like, it depends where guys are buying drugs too, like. Yes. So it's always going to be like not that far away from where they buy their drugs. Yeah. So, I mean, guys buy drugs in Washington Heights. So like if you were to go not even a mile, like Long Island City towards where uh, Queensboro Plaza is, there's a there's a halfway house over there. There's definitely a methadone clinic. There's a lot of homeless over there. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah, yeah. you don't have to go far to find them right. here, but we don't have like a methadone clinic right. or any of that so shit. It's closer. It's closer to, to yeah. There, so yeah, it happens yeah. over there, yep. but it's rare to see people make it over here because mm -hmm. there's really, to go get your fix, you'd have to go so far to do it. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those junky miles are short, man. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, imagine that time. I mean, yeah. It's probably similar with crack, right? Imagine the time it would take to get to where you got to go score and where you go smoke. You got to account for that. Yeah, crack's different than than heroin though. Like heroin is like it's a round the clock kind of situation. Really? You know what I mean? Like you can't Well, I knew that, but I thought crack was similar. Or is it all dependent upon the addict? Are you saying the drug is different? Yeah, like the drug like you I mean there's a physical dependence that happens with cocaine, yeah. crack, all that, but like not like heroin. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like yes. when you're on heroin yeah, like yeah, you yeah, need yeah, to yeah. always be cuz you'll like, get this, you'll get sick. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Cuz you'll get withdrawals, right? So it's like you always need to be like 
you're tethered to it in a way that's like I never want to be too far away from where I can get more heroin. Yes. Where the crack guys, they'll roll. You yeah. know what I mean? They'll roll around. They just like they know where the good shit is. But I mean, yeah, you, they'll roll around. I, I mean, always forget about that. How crack you? What's the hangover on crack? If you don't have it, have it for a while. Is there? Oh, uh, the withdrawals with the Jones, the Jonesy. Uh, yeah, 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 it's like a, it's like a. Is it? As, it's not as bad as heroin though. People say a, heroin, they'd rather a, die. It's not a physical thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, not okay. as, it's not as physically demanding. But the the mental the the um. The mental breakdown, I would say, it's from severe. like rocks or, or cocaine, like if you're a severe like cocaine user, like uh, or fucking rock smoker, like the 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 mental speeds the same way too. I, I have friends with that like, man, they're just fucking they're Looney Tunes now, man. Really, just they're just they're, not they, like they did their brain off speed. Yeah, they just get you just get fucking cuckoo, man. I, I don't even know you just cooped out, man. You're like you just. You've been, See, I always thought that was like a bad acid trip scenario, but it, it's with speed too. It's just when you fucking when you do drugs like that for as long like and as just consistent, you just get like nuts. Yeah, yeah. You just get a little fucking crazy, man. Like those guys, like those guys. Sometimes it's like, okay, is this a byproduct of the drug, or is this the drug that did that to you? You know, like because I got a lot of methods in my in my family. Yeah, and my dad. I mean, he's he's been doing meth now since 1999. Right. So the, how does he talk? Does he talk like a crazy person? I haven't person? talked to him in years. But he he he, talks he won't even fool he... you. He's not. He's past. He used to be able to. If you didn't know him well enough, and you only dealt with him for like, I don't know, in an air conditioned room for an hour, mm -hmm. you would be like, that guy's a little weird. But like, whatever. You wouldn't think he was a raging addict. Right. Now you're like, oh, that dude's an addict. Yeah. But yeah, right, uh, right, right, right. I haven't talked to him. I haven't held a conversation with him. I don't know, seven years now, six years. So I don't know. But yeah, yeah, yeah. last time I talked to him, he just, it, he was just wearing it. Yeah. It wasn't what necessarily he said. You he was what? just maybe wearing it. Maybe that's the other thing too, is like the hot, you don't hide it anymore after a while. And that's I is a it. working, you want to talk about on I brand? Always, I always hit it. I always, you know, I kept that. Yeah. Shit. Oh yeah. You're, Cause yeah, you're yeah. very functional. Well, I had a job. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was so working. with him, it's very working class. Cause the dude, you could laugh. It keeps you high forever. Oh, speed! And speed's amazing. I mean, and meth is like yeah. it's you're on a task. It's amazing. So, it's perfect for a dude that has to go to like a legit do shit with your body job, even though you're gonna fail eventually if you can't maintain. Right. But I, man, my dad he couldn't keep a job, but my uncle could. Uh -huh. My uncle worked as a like a nighttime janitor his whole life. Oh yeah, because he just found jobs that yeah. didn't give a shit if yeah 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 you're not you're gonna see what one person maybe on your shift <laughs> yeah, right and you're gonna show up and the dude worked his ass off like the guy would show up work his ass off dude likable he was likable nice dude there was this guy when I was a janitor uh, at my high school one of the guys and he was like the dad of one of my fucking one of the students a uh, girl I went to grade school with but like he was a fucking lush. Like oh, just drunk, straight up drunk, alky, just straight up alky, man. And I remember watching him trying to clock in one day, just missing the fucking card. <laughs> and it was just, and I was this just is the start of the day. The start of the day, he showed up like this, <laughs> and I'm just, and I was like, yeah, I'm a teenager kid, and I, you know. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not going to say anything. And then another teenager kid came in and then. And oh, then, now it's going to spread. Now we're just now we're just going to fucking start. <laughs> yeah, joking. yeah. But at first I was just like, this is uncomfortable because I'm not going to say anything to an adult. Like, you know what I mean? I'm not yeah. just going to fuck with this guy yeah. solo. But another student came in, another student fucking janitor. <laughs> student. Another winner. <laughs> you guys are looking at your future. <laughs> I was just like, how you doing over there, JJ? <laughs> Because he comes in, I go, yeah, check this out. And we were like, oof. Yeah, yeah, now you get it. Almost. Ah! Are you still trying to clock He's in? still trying to fucking put the card in the, in the, in the clock. This guy's lost an hour of fucking pay. <laughs> he can't clock in on time. This guy's been here since 6 in the morning. Oh, man. And then he got fucking, to like, nasty with it. Like, oh, I mean. Yeah, like just a just mean drunk. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, all right, fuck this. Yeah, yeah, yeah dude. Yeah. I ain't hanging out with you anymore. No, fuck this. this. It was fun for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, and I don't want to fight some drunk grown up. I don't want to fight somebody's dad. Yeah, all this like <laughs> fucking world of disappointment behind each punch. 
<laughs> you're just some kid thinking you're fucking around, and this guy just hits you with all of his life's failures with his right hand. <laughs> you're just like just teeing off. I mean, that would be a dream. Imagine being a drunk middle aged janitor, and it's the kids at the school fucking with you that you have to clean up after. And then you just, you just get one, just you're going to get fired and yeah. you let it all out. Just this one kid. Oh, yeah, just right. punch him as hard as he can in his, che- his 16-year-old chest. She's going to cave your underdeveloped 16-year-old bird chest. <laughs> Little Eddie McGowan's a fucking farmer tan chest. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, so your wife hates when you yell at people in the car. Oh, my God. She's uh, accepted it, I think, but she rolls her eyes because what happens is, and this is what I think really drives her nuts, is I'm screaming across her. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm rolling her window down and screaming (laughs) across her. And she's like, what the fuck? (laughs) You know what's funny is I don't drive as much as you. Yeah. Like, I just drove recently to, to a vacation we had. And... um. I I think because I have gotten in those scenarios with lo- my wife so much, I am really cognizant of not acting tough in front of her. I cannot raise well, my you, voice. I just do not do it you anymore. You got a kid in a car, though, too. Like, if I had a well, kid well, in a car. Well, I mean, car, I, I'm saying, like, even now, if it was her and I, yeah. I would not. Yeah, but yeah. I have lost the right to, though. Yeah. I you, burned right. the bridge a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have, I have Done you're cra- too much. You're crazier than I'm me. I'm a when crazy it comes to person. Like temper shirt. Yeah, I got. Shirt. I got to. Yeah, yeah. I, I have to yeah. always be mindful of that stuff. You, it's kind of funny when you yell at people in the car because it's not like a. I once had a guy, a buddy of mine in high school, that would get take it too serious. That's the guys you don't want to hang with. Like it's oh. not that serious. Yeah, dude, it goes away from get, me. It you goes need away to yell from, to get it out of you. It get, goes away in like. Three seconds after I yell, I'm done. It's like coming. You're yeah. like, oh, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I thought about some crazy stuff. <laughs> now that I came, I don't really, you know. Yeah, I don't really, I don't care about it. That's not me. <laughs> that was me then. That was that's me. not I'm me not now. <laughs> For person now, night and day. <laughs> like, well, that's what's funny when I'm with you. It's like, oh, like, you know, it's, honestly, you have never had any bits of road rage I thought were inappropriate in front of me. And oh. we've been in the car a ton yeah, yeah, yeah. together. Yeah. You've never been like, oh, fuck you. But I also think it's because we're two guys in a car and the, it looks bad. Two oh. guys in a car yelling or well, here's the like other we're trying thing. to be tough guys here's in the, the car. Other thing. Uh, yeah, I've never had. No one's ever uh, given, given me flack when Ye- you're in a car. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Because it's right. two dudes. Yeah, right? you're right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, that makes sense, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't that weird how that happens? It's yeah, like I mean, it's like how that, men assess that. It's the numbers when they're going to talk it's a that numbers shit. Thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. A, well, it's like me watching JJ clocking in. <laughs> it's not until I had backup. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, I start yeah, fucking yeah. running my mouth. <laughs> That's my problem. I've always, <laughs> I've always been a loner. I was, just fucking, I was thinking about that today about how like I just get my ass all all the time growing up. I never just I was too dumb and not scared enough. To, like I'm yeah. going in on that. Like I, I've been in a number of altercations with grown men as a young kid. Like, oh wow! Yeah. Like 12, 13. Oh wow! Not where they would. They probably wanted to hit me. Uh huh. But like where I am openly shit talking a grown man because of something. Oh. Because I'm that. I'm raised in a way. I'm very very nuts like that. I very just, stupid. I just had a thing with a couple of kids the other day. I forgot about this. So uh, I got a spot downtown. I parked the car. I'm right on uh, right in the village, and I parked the car and I, and I'm reaching in to grab the doors open. I'm grabbing my phone from the thing and uh, you know my keys and these uh, little teenage kids on their uh, bikes doing wheelies. You've seen those kids around oh, the city. I hate that. I have no problem with them, but they're. Uh, I, I always I get a joke. I'm like, dude, look at this kid, fucking wheelies. That's bad. It's what I always like. I get I get a little. I'm a little impressed. You had a fan. <laughs> so there's a group of them, maybe like six of them, coming up the street, and then the next thing you know, and they're all doing wheelies. This kid clips his fucking pedal on my door oh. and goes flying, oh. and I go, and I'm like, ew, because my door, it, the sound it makes is crazy. Yeah, it's because like, it almost hyperextends the door. That's what I thought. Yeah, right. 
So I'm like, I go, yo, and the kid's on the ground, and his friends go, what are you yelling at? I go, the kid just hit my car. And then I see him, and it was so funny because it was like such a dad thing. To like the my first instinct was like, what are you doing? You're fucking with the car. You fucking around. This is it. And then I see him, and I go right into like coach mode. I go, all right, don't move it. I, I come over to the kid. I go, yeah, hold on, all right, hold on. Wait, what is it? The wrist with the knee. What is the knee? I'm like, okay, you'll be okay. <laughs> And I just give him like I'm just there. I go, all right, let's, all right, guys, get his bike. <laughs> and I just say, I turn into like the dad, yeah. the co- you know, the team. See, I, coach. I, I actually enjoy. The, I've always, any time, like I remember one time. This is pretty much the standard of all the times I've been in an issue with an adult as a kid. I've, I'm scared of adults because mm-hmm. I got my ass beat by adults. So I would never engage an adult unless I had to engage an adult. And it's always them fucking like one time when I was in Little League, I remember we were warming up before a game and this kid on my team was talking shit to me and I just started roasting him. And there was a guy in center field, like a 55 year old white man getting drunk in the, there was a canyon. (laughs) He was getting drunk in the canyon behind center field. (laughs) And I guess he had been sitting there drinking the whole time, but he only heard me apparently. Uh And I'm like a 10 year old kid and he's, Talking, she gets up and starts talking shit to me in center field. Oh, dude. Like, in a way that if I would have heard someone talk to my son that way, who was getting drunk in center field, yeah. like, it would have been, there would have been a repercussions. We would have had a situation yeah. because yeah, it was, yeah, like, yeah. way beyond right. appropriate. Right. He wasn't, like, trying to be an adult. No. Right. So I just start ripping on this guy. He was wearing this brown shirt that had, like, a fucking like a hole in it. And I just started talking about how you can't afford a brown shirt. Like, I just, you know, yeah. hitting them where it hurts yeah. because I'm dealing like everyone in my family is like a 21 one year old dude. Yeah. And they're all ripping me at home. Right. So what do you, th- you think? I can't rip you. You fucking loser. You think I'm some 10 year old kid <laughs> that's going to run away. And I just remember the coach came out there. was like, hey, buddy. All right. Like, it's enough. Like, yeah, like talk to this guy <laughs> and take me to the dugout. That's crazy. I, it was nuts, but that that has happened to me, no joke, fifteen times from the time I was nine till the time I was probably eighteen. Yeah, I don't know if I ever had anything like that as a kid, like where an adult was like fucking with me. I'm trying to think. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think that's why I'm so weird, like in neighborhoods with my kid. I'm always a, I carry that with me. Dude, that's a crazy thing. I carry that. that. to be a, happen a couple of times. That's a, like a... All the time. Yeah, I had yeah, a guy yeah. at SeaWorld. I was cheering for Shamu. I was getting excited. This guy yelled at me for being excited for Shamu because he was sitting in front of me and he said I was too loud. Oh, I, thought wow. I, gonna, like, uh, I thought he was going to like... He almost grabbed me. I thought he was going to grab me, like shake me. And he spoke directly to you? Yeah. Not to parents? No, directly to me. My parents were, were getting drunk. They weren't paying attention. Oh, shit. And they were like... And my dad, dude, this, this episode wasn't supposed to be this, but it is. <laughs> my dad, like, acted like a tough guy, but sometimes he turned pussy. Oh, sure. And that shit. Sure. I just remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember seeing that. I mean, like, never in my life will I ever turn pussy. Yeah, right. He All this, like, loud guy shit. Mm-hmm. And the minute, like, some dude was legit, he would try to, like, some, he would fight sometimes. But uh-huh. when he, when a guy was, like, gonna he knew the guy was going to fight too. He, he was always a little bit of a bitch. Mm-hmm. And he would always like, I remember one time we were in, this is like fucking 10 years ago. Uh, I took him to a movie for a while. I was trying to like rebuild our relationship kind mm-hmm. of bullshit. And Rocky, the last, the Rocky the six, no, oh. Rocky six. So it was 2006. It was Rocky Balboa. Oh, it was right. the first yeah, comeback yeah, movie. Yeah, right, right, right. So I go, hey, let's go see this movie. You know, we like uh, two yeah. Italian guys like Rocky. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so we're wa- we know, watching the trailers, and this dude, these two guys sitting next to us, he's screaming at the trailers, like trying to be funny, and he gets uh, kind of a laugh. Uh, so he just keeps doing it, keeps doing it, and finally I just look at him. I go, and I'm very, very loud right before the movie starts. I go, you need to shut the fuck up. Yeah. You need to shut the fuck up. Yeah. And his buddy was like, take it easy. I go, you can shut the fuck up too. And if you don't shut, like I just went yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, my dad, Mr. Tough Guy was like, hey, calm down, calm down, calm down. It's not New York. Dude, how high are you in meth right now? Yeah. Me calm down? 
It's just shit like that. Dude, I hate when guys... Wait, dude, you don't have to put on a show. Just leave me the... Just, you know, I want to enjoy the movie yeah, and I don't want to be... on a show. It's like one thing if it's like to your friend, but then when it's when people are like... Shat, and you, it's you, San Diego, so people you, are stupid. Like, they laugh at it thinking that it's not going to egg this guy on. Uh-huh, uh-huh. They're trying to like be extra polite. I mean, was it funny? No. Oh, yeah. what, what, what could possibly be funny in that scenario? I, mean, I don't know. If he's had a good line, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> If you had I mean, a good line, I would have let it slide. That's what I'm saying. That's yeah, what I'm if it was saying. funny, it's it funny. Like it's a good line. And yeah, you would have right. known when to end. Right. Like, if you would have ended it there, there would have been no issue. If it was a good line, it would have stopped. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He would have been smart enough to know. Yeah. But I just remember my dad, like, oh, dude, who are you? <laughs> ah. You dude, big it, pussy. you know what? Thinking about you with the Shamu story makes me. <laughs> I had a guy at a wrestling match want to fight me too when I was a kid because Hulk Hogan was coming out to fight Kamala. I was screaming so loud for Hulk Hogan. <laughs> this guy wanted to fight me. I was screaming right in his ear though. That guy was right. I was screaming right in his it ear. It makes me wonder if I've ever like, hey kid, hey kid, come on, please. You know what I mean? Like I feel like I might have like you. You point in that situation like a kid. Fuck. All right, kid. All right, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> There's something that I'm hateable about my face. You would think I make more money in this industry with how hateable I am. It, it, it's brought me nothing. <laughs> uh, shit. Even uh, as a kid, the hate that uh, <laughs> grown men had for me. Uh, <laughs> Some people are likable. Lot, uh, Josh, hateable. It's incredibly hateable. It's kind it's of amazing. It must be my nose. It's kind of thing. <laughs> the sheer sight of it angers people. Fucking veal parm. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh yeah. shit i was thinking about today uh about some of the jobs i've had and i was i had this you ever have somebody that was and we were just we'd just been talking about drugs so like you ever work with somebody that was doing drugs on the on the dl like at, at work um yeah but i didn't know it until i started doing drugs uh-huh because i didn't do drugs until i was 30 so I remember one dude when I worked at the gym. I always thought like, oh man, this guy loves going to put water on his face and hair. He's a fucking cokehead. Yeah. He was a raging yeah. cokehead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I worked with a guy. So he was the head of our department. And, uh, you know, when I got this job, it was like an AV department. But I had. Hold on. Isn't that funny though? I like. The minute you know when a guy has to go to the bathroom and wash his face, it's really just because he's sweating so profusely, and he comes out of that bathroom with the paper towels, <laughs> wiping his chest and his neck. I can't believe the brown that. paper towels. How these long? Co-kids. That's what's so crazy about because I was sober at the time, but like, I, how long it took me to put it all together? I was amazed. Like an idiot, how long, right? Well, it's just because he was such a nerd. Like I didn't, I would never think in a million years yeah, yeah. that this dude that was he'd doing be partying coke. at work. Yeah. yeah, but he he did that. Like it, I remember like it was like that. Uh, the end of Usual Suspects. You know what I mean? I was like oh, yeah, Kobayashi, yeah. Kobayashi. <laughs> like it all started. To How'd fucking... you find out? So I caught him, but I didn't catch him doing coke. I he had there was this little storage room, and uh, you know if you needed like a wire or some a cable something like that, you would go in there. And I went in there one time, and um, he was in there, and he like he he would like did one of those shuffling kind of things uh, where he was like, oh, here it is. Oh yeah. And he had like a, I was like, you what? know what's so funny is he had that he should have rehearsed it. Yeah. Because he already had the plan. Yeah. I realized like in my the heyday of being a fucking liar or maybe just acting like you if you rehearse it enough. Oh. I would have ran that ten times before. So he because <laughs> that's his spot, probably. It was it was his little room because yeah. another guy. Uh, the, How many times do you would have ran through if someone walked in and you would reach? Everybody, I would reach and I would go. Oh my! This thing's been fucking. Everybody used to call it Rick's room. <laughs> <laughs> the cat's out of the bag, Ricky. <laughs> But here's the thing. I thought he was in there because he's such a little fucking nerd. I thought he was in there looking at porn. <laughs> I love how when it's like a nerdy guy, you're always like, yeah. here's you getting no pussy. And, uh, yeah, now like, nerdy guys get tons of pussy. Well, dude, he had the hottest girlfriend. Dude, this Cocaine. Sp- dude, crazy. And he had like the the gross pinky finger nail. Oh, of course, the vi- the vampire nail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I, I'm like, I can't believe I didn't put this oh, together. The fact that you saw the nail and didn't put it together. Oh, I was like, there's no, because I'm telling you, you look at this guy. You know, Coke's the lifestyle. 
<laughs> well, when you got like, that nail, that it's a lifestyle. Do we used to make jokes? He looked like Homer Simpson. Like he was bald. <laughs> He looked like a Homer hey, Simpson. Good yeah. Coke really does get you into a lot of doors, baby. Yeah, it's wild, dude. A lot of wild. doors. And that chick was fucking... Everybody would say... When his girlfriend came by, I was like, what the fuck? Ugly dude with hot chick, money, or Coke, or, or good, both. Good Coke, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, it, it went... And it was so funny because some of the older guys that worked there, they they used to... They didn't know what his deal was. And then me and another young when we I was like, "Yo, I think he's doing cocaine." Because I walked. Then I he had to get out of his little closet room, and he had oh, to. Oh like, yeah, he, he had go, to find a new spot. He had to find a new spot because you because you busted him. Because well, he was busted enough. Like people uh, walked in there enough times. And what he, did he do at the job? He was like the head of the department. Oh, so he was like one of those guys that's almost unfireable. Yeah, like he doesn't do anything. But he oversees a very lucrative up, department. Yeah, he would come up with all these crazy ideas like this is what we're going to do. <laughs> he goes to his little room and he comes out with some <laughs> fucking zany ideas. I don't know what it is, but when Rick comes out of that room, he comes out with imagination <laughs> land level ideas. You're like an Imagineer. Uh, <laughs> dude. Well, I'm going to give you one hint. Old Rick is tooting up the fucking... <laughs> The abominable snowman's prick. Uh, <laughs> He's just figuring out a way to snort the snowcock, baby. I, oh, man. I was talking to the other guy who was like my age. I go, hey, man, I think Rick's doing coke. He goes, oh, Rick's definitely doing coke. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> he goes. I was taking his shit, so I'm. In, he's like, I was in a stall, and he was in the bathroom, splashing water on his face, fucking hype, <laughs> hyping himself up, like, you got this, you got this, you got this, yeah. That's yeah. the cocaine <laughs> move, the water on the face. Yeah, totally. Whoa. He's like, just. He's like, dude, I was in a stall, just watching it through the fucking crack in the door. <laughs> well, I'm taking a grumpler. <laughs> I was like, this is nuts. This guy's my boss. <laughs> he's doing a fucking Friday Night Lights speech. <laughs> is this why nobody's getting raises? <laughs> this fucking loser. Oh man, I fucking hated that dude. Oh, um, see, that's a thing. Is now you want to like? I wish we could find that guy dude, and just take his wallet. I just want to take his wallet because he just fucked everybody he fucked over. Everybody. He fucked that for whole his department. own selfish. I'm a because uh, he's insecure because he's ugly, and now he has a good job right. and he has some money to buy some blow. It's yep. oh yeah, man, yeah, yeah. I fucking oh yeah. I remember when he left, he got fired, and he came in and to shake my hand. He's like, "Hey man, you did a really good job here." I was like, "Yeah, I know." That's right. I, I just yeah. looked at him oh, like, "I no, know." Look at you. You fucked me up, dude. Yeah. You fucked this whole place up, dude. Yeah. Like, nobody's getting raises, like because he was giving taking it for himself, or he, no? He was just fucking up, like. You know what I mean? Like, as the uh, place was going from an AV department to, like, more of, like, an edit facility, he's just fucking weighing it down because he would have all these crazy ideas. He changed uh, it. Kept changing so his the, budgets were He kept changing the mishandled. name of the, of the department. Like, he kept, you know, just cokehead shit. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. Like, just stupid yeah. shit that everybody then would, like, not take seriously. And um, I was like, bro, you, you fucked it. You know what I mean? You fucked us yeah. all up here. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, and yeah, yeah. they always want to shake hands, dude. He they always shake want. My they hand always up. want. It's like yeah. you just hijacked my work life, and now it's like we're all just a co-star in your movie, bro. Yeah, dude. This Get is your big fucking moment. Yeah. Good luck, bro. I wish you hit him with your swivel chair over the head. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking wish you would. I'm, I'm so irritated today. I don't know. Is it, it, I think because we were trying to get some. I was trying to get some guests, and. Some people said, anytime people say no to me in the industry, and I perceive, oh, 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 but I if I perceive it as a slight due to popularity, not quality, I can get real worked up. Oh, yeah, well. It is. A I mean. Oh, I get. But and I know I'm wrong. I'm so it has yeah. nothing to do with nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it is a separate thing. I am me, and that is that. But oh, oh, that working class disrespect gets pumped. Oh, it feels good. <laughs> it feel that working class. Nothing worse than a working class guy who felt disrespected <laughs> at the job. <laughs> Except this guy doesn't come home and beat his wife and kids. <laughs> He caused a problem down at the pub. No, I want to take it to the people who caused my problem. See, that's the thing. Is I, I come from men that are so mad at the people they work for, uh -huh. but they never 
smartened up. They were too lazy to figure out how to get the people that were fucking them over. Instead, they made everyone close to them pay for it. Their wives, their kids, their family members. All, we all had to pay for dad's bad day at work. Yeah. No more. Well, that's uh, going back to the that dude. So then... Um, then he left, and I took a TV. <laughs> I, t- I took a 32-inch Samsung. <laughs> it's in our bedroom for a long time. <laughs> I was like, fuck this dude. <laughs> Taking a fucking TV. I mean, but it's not his TV. No, it's not his. That's hey, the problem. Listen. I want to take his TV. Yeah, I want to go to his house but I looked and take it, it off like, the wall. But I looked at it like he cost me... You know, maybe a potential raise, whatever. I'm taking a TV. You know what I mean? I'm I, taking, yeah. <laughs> you know. I mean, we, we can justify all day <laughs> taking a TV. <laughs> well, it's we like all the- did. We all were like, hey, let's start taking TVs. <laughs> These TVs, we're taking them home. This one kid, uh, he come in. He was a intern, and um, we were getting rid of. We had the old, the, the old tube TVs. You remember those oh, fucking dude. things? And it was like... An I bought one of those thinking I was like... When I first moved uh, out, I bought one. It was like a $600. Yeah. Like 25 inch Sony flat screen front. Flat and front. The two, this thing the weighed of it's 300 like- <laughs> pounds. <laughs> so this kid... So we're getting rid of it. This intern comes in. It's probably 2010. You know, we're getting rid of those TVs now. We're getting these Samsungs yeah. are coming in. Uh, and... uh he goes, uh, he goes, dude, you guys are throwing these out? Yeah. We're like, yeah, they're fucking, these are old. We're not throwing them out. He goes, it's cool if I take one home? Well, yeah, you can take one home. <laughs> so first of all, it sat there for four months. <laughs> he couldn't figure out how to get it home. <laughs> and then when he, <laughs> he couldn't even plug it in anymore. <laughs> we don't even have an outlet for this, bro. <laughs> and then when he finally did, like, get it home. He fucking gave himself a hernia. I <laughs> ended up his five his five flight walk up. <laughs> he gave himself a hernia. Oh my god, dude! Those, th- those TVs. Because uh, I remember cute. when I had to move here, that was one of the I had to move my whole bedroom mm-hmm. to different places because everyone wanted something, right? Before I moved to New York City, and that was one of them. I gave it to my dad, and I had to carry that fucker inside those of his TVs. house. I yeah. wanted ah. Oh. And it was sharp on the bottom. I mean, you- yeah, you, they were impossible to carry because they were not the weight distribution on those old TVs was crazy. Like, it, yeah, it, it was. Uh, we had a forty-five inch Mitsubishi at my house. Wow, forty-five inch one tube. Of those? Holy tube shit. Dude, that f- came with its own like a forklift. Lower, uh, no joke. We had to. It took three guys from the football team. Yeah. to lift it and put it on a dolly, like one of those rolling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Brutal. It's, it's insane. Brutal. <laughs> Dude, and how proud. You know what oh, I mean? It's it the was biggest the TV. centerpiece. It's the biggest That's TV another, on the block. It's that's the biggest... another working class thing. Oh. Come see how big this TV is yep. we got. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Yeah, and yeah, I remember yeah. I was doing this. <laughs> Sometimes it comes out when I'm around like high, high end corporate people with this other, you know, I was doing one of my sessions, my corporate job. Oh, yeah, yeah okay. And I was talking about comedy. You know, they were asking me about my stand-up career because it's associated with how I do these sessions, right? Oh, sure, right. Yeah. So one of these guys, he, this guy probably makes five hundred thousand dollars a year. Oh, wow! He's asking me a question about comedy, and he, of course, money comes up because I sometimes I don't think he was doing this, but it is something I'm I have to be mindful of is that I'm there under a capacity that typically is very welcoming. So a lot of times, it's not like a stand-up show where someone might be threatened by you being funny. Like you know what I mean? Like I've. I'm, you know this. I've told you this before when we perform. Sometimes dudes will get rude to me. Uh, you know, like if I, uh, you know, uh-huh. like hecklers will be like if, I, if they think I'm flirting with their girlfriend, they're like uh, yeah, yeah. something like that. There's yeah. always like a guy in the room that kind of wants to cut you down the size, and usually in those scenarios, it's money, because that's one thing they probably know they make more than you, oh, because right. you're you're a comedian, right? And I remember I said something like. Yeah, well, a gig I just did, I bought a 70-inch uh, TV with it. <laughs> Meanwhile, this guy has like a fucking, probably a house in the Hamptons. And <laughs> <70-inch TV. laughs> it was like, and you know, and uh, that's just what happens when you're making it. That's how things with you. I'll tell you how things are with me, Bob. Just bought a 70-inch television. Yeah, how's that feel? 
I know your how's bonus that? was six figures last year, Bob. But how's that, how's, how's that feel hearing that in a seven thousand dollars suit? <laughs> <laughs> fucking guy. Oh, dude. I don't know, man. That's crazy. You know what though? Uh, I want to make sure our audience knows right away. We are starting a new style of pop up show. You cannot be found anywhere in the nation. The working class holes, we will come to your job, to your office, and we will do a special stand-up show for your office. So office parties are coming up. We've already got a couple booked. Reach out to us. Working class working class comedians. Working class comedians at, at gmail.com. Gmail .com and book us for your office party. We bring our own gear. We bring our own setup. We'll come in at like 7 p.m. You can do like a happy hour, and we will do a 90-minute kick-ass show for your whole office. We'll even hang out afterwards, uh, sit at your desk, uh, eat your little snacks. <laughs> Ed will eat every snack. Yeah. Dude, if <laughs> if you, you got chips, you any got kind of vending of chips, machine. Those little kind bars. or uh, Those any, little free kind bars. Yeah, those little or like any kind of M&Ms. <laughs> Or even the turn thing where it fall, the Skittles fall out. Ed is there. Oh, I don't know about that. Yeah, you'll those, eat those. Uh, maybe if it's a nice place. But, uh, I mean, those some of those have been Ed in there. Ed stepped up. Ed yeah. moved up Some a of level. those have been in there for decades. I mean, I, I was just in an Acme uh, on Saturday. And as you walk in, they have those little turn. Th I was like, who's still? I mean, that candy must be in there since oh, the yeah. 80s, oh, yeah. dude. Like oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Probably tastes good too. Uh, you know, it's it's so old that maybe uh, you know what I mean. Like I'm like I kind of want to put the quarter in the front you and put the, the turn, quarter and, and then, then they give you a handful and then it's just loose candy. Yeah, just yeah, falls yeah, yeah. out of like a. But rusty... you know, no one's touched it. You can't go inside that. Oh, you dump it in the top. Sure. Unless people are going in the no, like the vending no, no. guy goes to the top. I don't think those. Guys, I mean, listen, if they're going to take candy. They're just going to take it from the. That's what candy I mean. Shelf. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, who's gonna? But like preservatives, they last forever. Yeah, I guess you're right. You know, I mean, if you need it, if you have you like some a jelly low beans. blood sugar, <laughs> <laughs> if your diabetes hey, is acting up, hey, hey, my grandma's diabetes. <laughs> Hurry up, run over to the Acme real quick. Grab some of that candy. Hey, <laughs> put this twenty five cent piece inside the front of it. Get me the jelly beans. Hard it right. Only, it only takes quarters. I uh, know it also takes nickels. <laughs> Uh, that's great. You can follow me at Josh Ricardo and go to joshricardo.com for all tour dates. The Working Class Holes Comedy Tour will be in Westview, Rhode Island at Tapped Apple. Uh, also, we were coming up to be in Hartford, Connecticut, August 9th and 10th. Yeah, baby. So buy your tickets now. Get those tickies, baby. Smoke that shit. Yeah, baby. Yeah, follow me on Instagram at Edmund Comedy. Go to edmundgowan.com, see my city dates, and uh, we'll see you guys again next week. You can listen to us on all major podcast platforms every Wednesday. You can follow us on Instagram at Working Class Holes. Also, make sure you watch the full show on YouTube. All you got to do is type in Working Class Holes. And please don't forget to rate us five stars and tell a friend. Come on.